So welcome to our parent and family meeting tonight. My name is Cassie Milligan. I'm the instructional parent instructional coordinator here at Central Gwinnett High School. And thank you for joining us. Um, for those of you who need the meeting in Spanish, the directions are in the chat box. And what we'll be doing tonight is talking about preparing for the end of semester and how families can prepare for the beginning of second semester. Okay. So I just introduced myself and I'd like you to know as well that we have Lindsay Lopez Segura and she's serving as a Spanish interpreter for those who would like to hear this meeting in Spanish. So once again, these are the directions para escuchar en español. Haga clic en el globo en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Um, click español de la lista y click mute original audio para que no se oiga el inglés. Okay. All righty. So I would like to start by stating what this meeting is not. Okay. This meeting is not to tell you how to help your child raise his or her grade for this semester. And I say, well, why not? Because today is December 7th. This semester ends December 17th, which is next week. <laughs> okay, so what the purpose of this meeting is, is to tell you what the final exam schedule is, to go over that with you, um, to give you some parent tips for helping your child be prepared for finals and what you can do those days of finals talking about first semester grades, transcripts, course credits, and then getting ready for second semester, okay? So if you, by chance, see me pause for a moment, remember I have Ms. Um, Lopez Segura with me interpreting, so I wanna make sure that everyone gets all the information, so I may slow down or I may pause just so you know, okay? All right, and let me just post one more time or another time the instructions for Spanish. I think I see one of my parents coming in that might need it. So as long as we're clear that I, I can't um, tell you exactly how to, um, or it's not gonna be possible for me to tell you how to get your child to a certain grade within the next few days. I think you'll find a lot of information that'll be helpful for the end of this year or this semester and for next semester as well. So the final exam schedule, So some upcoming semester dates, okay. So final exams are December 14th through the 17th. And then early release days for high school exams, that's when the school day ends at 11.45, is December 15th through the 17th. So just be aware that those three days, students will get out of school at 11.45. Okay, the buses will run as normal. Um, they'll just get home earlier. And that's an opportunity for them to be able to um, study for their next exams the next day. Which one? December 17th is the end of the first semester, as I mentioned. So that's next Friday, a week from this Friday. Students have break December 20th through January 5th, which is winter break. So no school, yay. We all would have survived first semester. <laughs> January 6th, students come back. So, um, oh, so second semester begins January 6th. And in case you um, need the, let's see if it will let me copy it. And it won't because I'm moving. I will put it in the link later or when I send it out. But the calendars are for the whole year are on the website for um, Gwinnett County Public Schools and they have it in various languages. It's important to take a look at that um, because like I will mention in a moment, students are not able to take exams early. So um, sometimes families will make plans for vacation and the flights are cheaper about three days before we get out for winter break. 
So unfortunately though, students aren't able to take their exams early. So with the final exam schedule, all final exams must be done in person on campus, even for those of you who um, may be in the combination Gwinnett online campus um, classes, the um, final exams have to be done on the Central Gwinnett High School campus. Final exams cannot be given early for any reason. Sorry. If a student is absent, they have the first 10 days when we return in January to make up the final exam. Okay, and then I'm going to take you to the final exam schedule so that you can see it. You can find this on the Central Gwinnett High School website. And it's also been posted in our weekly parent electronic newsletter, the nightly notes. <clears throat> and let me stop sharing so I can turn to this other screen. Okay. There we go. All right, so you should now be able to see the Central Gwinnett High School final exam schedule for um, this first semester. And so testing starts Tuesday, December 14th. And so it's a normal school day as far as the hours from 7.10 to 10, but it's a modified bell schedule. So the first two classes, are final exams. So students will have their first period final exam and their second period final exam. Then they'll have lunch in third period and then fourth period and leave at 2.10. Okay. If you're wondering, well, what does my child have for first period or second period? You'll need to look at their schedule. You can see that in the parent portal or even in the student portal, you can have your student show you that information. Okay, then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, those are the early release days that I mentioned before. So school start, starts at 7.10 and ends at 11.45 each of these days, 15th, the 16th, and the 17th. Okay. And so on Wednesday, the 15th, students will take their finals for third period and fourth period. On Thursday, December 16th, on the fifth period and sixth period exams, and on the 17th, seventh period and eighth period exams. Okay. Are there any questions about the, the final exam schedule? All right. Cool. And if you think of anything, please feel free to put it in the chat. I'm solo monitoring today, but I have a couple of screens going on. So I will see if you raise your hand or if you put something in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself to ask the question as well. Okay. Okay. And I'm just posting one more time for anyone who might need Spanish. Okay. And so we're going to go back to the presentation. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for one moment. Which one is it? Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so final exam tips for parents. Okay, so these are things that you can do the days of the final exam. Um, students have been preparing for final exams all semester. Um, they've been given strategies on how to um, do well. And it, honestly, the best way to prepare for finals is to make sure that students are doing their work throughout the semester or in class throughout the semester. So what can you do during those final exam days that can have a great impact on how your child 
performs on them. There are some simple tips, but it's things that um, sometimes we don't keep in mind. For instance, monitoring your teen's bedtime to ensure that they have an adequate amount of sleep. Um, you might have to take that phone <laughs> or that tablet if they sometimes take it in there with them to their room at bedtime and maybe not go to sleep exactly when they need to, because it's just so important that they're well rested when they're taking their exams. And I will tell you personally in monitoring exams, I've had students fall asleep while taking the exam because they were just so tired. So that's something that is helpful for them. Um, just encourage them to get an adequate amount of sleep. Another thing that you can do, particularly for those parents of students who work after school, you may need to check their work schedule for those final exam days to make sure that they're able to get off in time to get home so that they can get the adequate amount of sleep that's needed for finals. Um, some parents um, have talked with their students about talking to their manager about getting those days either off or maybe reduced by an hour or if you feel like you need to, you can communicate with your um, child's manager or boss or wherever they may work as well. Okay. Be sure that your student is present and on time for exam days. So if student misses an exam day, remember because of the way that things are set up, they may have to take it at another time. If they miss it on Thursday, I'm sorry, that Friday, which is the last day, they may have to take it when they get back in January. And that's for students, sometimes that's a long time to have a break for two weeks and then have to go back and take an exam. So it's important that the students are present and on time for these exam days. If you can encourage students to eat breakfast and lunch, um, if they choose to do that at home, that's fine as far as breakfast. Um, particularly that full day on the 14th because, um, well, actually they have it in the morning. So more breakfast than lunch um, because sometimes students will come in, they haven't eaten and they're hungry and they're not able to focus as well as they could on their exams. All Central Gwinnett students receive um, breakfast and lunch at no cost. So if they would like to come in and eat breakfast, just need to make sure that they're there early enough to get breakfast so that they can be on time for their final exam. Also, for parents, stay realistic with your expectations um, and how you express those expectations to your, to your teen. Um, if they've been making A's, all along the way, then it may be realistic to think that they'll make an A on the final. If they've been making maybe C's or D's, then they may not make that A on the final. So the best thing to tell your child is to do their best, to try their best, um, and help them not to have anxiety to the point that that could help make them not do well on their test as well, okay? If the test, the final, or even the class um, they end up failing, help them to learn from their failure. And it may be talking about what changes to make for second semester. It may be talking about how to better manage time, but help them to learn from it. Once it's done, um, basically it's done, but what do we take away from it? That's going to be the more important lesson. And then also take care of your teen and yourself mentally. Um, these are stressful times, even without final exams going on. And um, this has been a stressful year for a lot of our students returning back after a year or more of um, virtual learning. Um, exams are typically stressful times for middle school students, high school students, college students, um, and all of their parents and all of those levels. So make sure your team is doing okay mentally. Make sure that you are too and just take care of each other so that they can do their best, okay? Any questions about the parent tips for final exams? Okay. All right. Okay, first semester grades and credits. So we're gonna talk about what you're going to see 
at the end of this semester and how you can look to see how your child did for this semester. Okay, so we're gonna talk about um, graduation requirements for a little bit. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I actually do a whole presentation just on um, grades and credits and transcripts. Um, we'll be doing it at the beginning of second semester in the middle of second semester. Um, and that in, in and of itself is like an hour meeting, but this is just gonna be a brief overview of it so that you have an idea of what to look for at the end of this semester leading into second semester. Okay, so number of credits that are required for graduation, 23 credits, okay? And that's the state requirement. And for Gwinnett County Public School students, there's the high school gateway test. So right now, because of the pandemic, um, that requirement has been waived for the seniors of this year, but juniors and sophomores will be taking um, Gateway in the spring. And I'll also be having an informational meeting about Gateway so that parents will be able to better understand what Gateway is and um, what students are expected to show on that graduation test. And then the other part of um, testing that deals with um, graduation is the milestones or end of course test. And I didn't put the percentage of grade there because um, it's um, changed. So it's typically 20% um, for some students who um, for last year with seniors, it didn't count that percentage or actually any of the students it actually counted 0%. So I just want you to know that that has changed. So it is back to the 20%. But if you're looking as far as the past year and a half, it was different. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned there, the 20% of the final grade for the semester in which the test is given. And then these are the classes that have Court, um, end of course tests. So it's 11th grade American literature and composition, ninth grade algebra one, ninth grade biology, and 11th grade US history. Okay, so all of these will basically be given in second semester, which is at the end of these courses. All of these courses are two semesters, so students will be taking these in the spring. Okay. And if your student happens to be a 10th grader and is taking biology, they would still take it. The grades here are just students who are typically in these grades when they take it. Okay. All right, so with the gateway, it will be given in the spring. I mentioned that um, I will be having a meeting um, beginning of second semester to talk about that. It's an essay based exam, and there's US history that's given in 11th grade, and biology and chemistry that's given in 10th grade. And the students have to pass both parts when it's required for graduation. But once again, students, seniors for this year have been waived from the requirements for Gateway. Okay, any questions about Gateway? Okay. All right, so what's the credit? I said a student has to have 23 credits. So what is a credit? So a credit is just really a term that they use to explain a unit of learning. And the way that it works is that that unit is interchangeable wherever else that student may go, um, within the state of Georgia, within another state, so that they can receive credit for what they've learned. And so it's the units of um, credit that's required for graduation from high school. And I'll give you some examples to better explain. Okay, so how are credits earned? To earn a credit for a class, students must pass the class with a grade of 70% and above. Okay, so anything that's basically a D 
and above is going to earn a student half a credit. Okay. And we'll talk about how that works at Central Gwinnett High School. But the grade that you're looking for to earn any credit in the state of Georgia is 70%. All right, so how are credits earned? So in a year, um, we have semesters. And so each semester is 18 weeks. So we're coming to the end of first semester. So your student has been in school basically 17 weeks because next week is the end and that would make 18 weeks. So each class that they've passed, with the 70% at the end of next week, the end of this semester, they will earn half a credit, okay, for that class. Central Gwinnett students take eight graded classes per semester. So if the student passes all of their classes for first semester and receive half a credit for each of those eight classes, that would mean at the end of the semester, they would have four credits for the semester. Okay. So that's for a semester. Half a credit for each class with 70% or more, eight graded classes. So eight times half a credit is four credits. So the year is made up of two of these 18 week semesters. So two semesters per school year. After two semesters, a student can earn four credits per semester times two semesters. That would be eight credits per year. Okay, so our ninth grade students who have passed all of their classes for ninth grade would have eight credits at the end of the year. Okay. So we talked about the eight credits for a year. So currently at Central Gwinnett High School, in the way the semesters are composed of eight classes, <laughs> after four years, which is eight semesters, your student would have 32 credits, okay? Or the possibility of earning 32 credits. Um, based on um, passing their classes, all of their classes with a 70% or above. Okay. Are there any questions about how many credits students can earn? Okay. All right. Um, so for promotion, to go from ninth grade to 10th grade, students need to have earned at least five credits. From 10th grade to 11th grade, 11 credits. From 11th grade to 12th grade, 17 credits. And then remember graduation is 23 credits. And then you might think, well, wait a minute. You said the students can earn 32 credits, so that should be super easy. So that's yes and no. So although students can earn up to 32, 32 credits, the key is that the 23 credits must meet the graduation requirements for specific classes, both core and elective. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. Sorry, it went one too far. There we go. Come on, one more. Okay. So for each of those, er, each of the areas shown here, students need four credits. So it's typically four years. Okay. So four credits of language arts, four credits or four years of math, four credits or four years of science, three credits or basically three years of social studies three years or three credits of electives that fit within foreign language. The CTAE 
is computer, technology, agriculture, or engineering. So those are specialized tech classes or fine arts, okay? So sometimes the students think that electives are not important, but they are because they actually have requirements for these specific electives, three credits. And then also if you look underneath PE and health electives, there's another four credits of electives they must have. So that's actually seven credits of electives that are necessary. There's also one semester of PE and one semester of health that equal one credit that are required. And then a total of all these is 23 credits. So that's where your 23 credits come from. Okay, all right. So if students pass all of their classes every year, they are more than able to get the 23 credits and graduate on time. Even if a student has a couple of oops moments, they can still make up their classes within a normal schedule and graduate on time. One thing I'd like to mention, foreign language is not a requisite for graduation, so it's not required for graduation. However, it is required if you would like to enter any um, Georgia four-year college or university, a student needs to have the same language for at least two years. Okay, so and that's going to be pretty much any college or university throughout the United States will require at least two years of the same language. But because they can have so many different um, opportunities, um, students can easily get that that um, requirement into their schedule as of now. Okay, any questions about the 23 credits? Wow, okay. Cool. Okay, so transcript. Transcripts are sent home after the end of each semester. And then if you need to, you can also request a transcript from the registrar's office or the student support team, sorry, student support center and the official transcript from there as well. And what a transcript will show is a history of the students' classes. So this is a ninth grade sample of a ninth grade student. So remember any grade with a 70 or above is passing. So this sample student passed all of their classes for the first semester. And as you notice under credit, there's half a credit for each of those classes because they were all passed. If there were any grades below a 70, then it would show a zero under credit. Okay. So this transcript is what you get in the mail and um, that will show you exactly where your student stands as far as what their grades were. You can kind of think of it um, as a report card, but instead of a report card in high school, we call it a transcript, okay? And these grades are permanent throughout their high school career. And so it's important to remind students of that depending upon what their goals are for um, after high school, because um, all classes count within their grade point average. And depending upon what type of education they would like to have after high school, that grade point average could be very important. Okay. And then this is just a copy of the back of the form and that will have attendance. Um, it will have any kind of testing information, typically gateway. I don't know if they'll have that on there for this year or not, since it's not a requirement, but um, it's usually on the back so that you can see if your child has met gateway or not. Okay, all right. The other place that you can see this information is in the parent portal. 
I can't show you a live version of this um, just because of confidentiality. So I took screenshots of one. So when you go into your child's parent portal, you would click on course history and it will show their graduation status. <laughs> okay. And then you can see which classes that they've gotten credit for by hovering over the line with the percentage. At the bottom of that page under student course history, if you click that on, then you'll see a listing of their classes. Okay. And you'll see what grade they received under Mark, um, what credit that class was worth, and then what credit the student received. And once again, any class that is 70 or above would be half a credit. Okay. Another thing that you can do that I can help you with in the Parent Center is to do a graduation status check. And um, I like doing this with parents because once I show them, they can always keep up with it later. And what you basically do is use the course history or the transcript to go through. And for each class that has a 70, you check it off of the graduation status checklist. And then that way you know exactly what your student needs or what's remaining to get those required 23 credits. Okay, if you'd like to come into the Parent Center and have that done, um, I know we don't have much time for this semester, but definitely at the beginning of second semester, um, which would probably be better anyway, because by then you would have the first semester grades, and I can help you to look at that to see exactly what's left. If you're a senior, and if your child is a senior, I certainly suggest that you do that with their senior counselor because they have the senior applications for those students and what they need for graduation in May. Okay, and if you're not sure who your counselor is, I'm going to um, show you where you can find it a little bit later, or you can always give me a call and I can give you the um, information as well. Okay. So what happens if a student fills a class? It depends upon, is it a required class? If it's not a required class, then, give me one second. Okay. If it's not a required class, then they don't necessarily need to repeat it, but they may have to take another class to get the credit that they lost for that class that was filled. Okay, if the failing grade is for a required class and that failing grade is 60% or below, then the student would have to repeat the class, the full class, um, whether that's in a future semester, whether that's in summer school. We have a um, Gwinnett online campus center at Central Gwinnett High School, and students can take classes that they failed. Um, online while at Central Gwinnett High School in one of their class periods. Or some students will go to Phoenix High School at, in the afternoon. So they come to Central for the full day and then may take one or two classes at Phoenix in the um, afternoon or evening. Okay, so those are all options that can be used to make up classes. And then if the failing grade for the required class is between 60 to 69%, credit recovery can be considered. And um, I'll explain in a moment what credit recovery is. So credit recovery is an abbreviated class to make up a course. It's typically done with an online course. So the student has made between a 60 to 69 in the class, so that means there was just a little bit of something that they didn't understand to get that 70. So therefore they can take the abbreviated class. Remember if it's 60 or lower, they have to repeat the whole class. So credit recovery can be online or sometimes it's offered face-to-face. -face. 
And there can be multiple sources of credit recovery available. Um, all of those sources that I mentioned back, sorry. I'm gonna go back just one, there we go. Gwinnett Online Campus, Phoenix High School, um, Summer School, they all offer credit recovery. So that can be an option. Also, um, at times, credit recovery is offered at Central Gwinnett. They will determine that many times at the end of the semester to see if there's a certain number of students that maybe didn't pass a certain class. Credit recovery may be offered within the schedule at Central Gwinnett High School. So my suggestion to you is that once you get the transcript or once you go on um, Parent Portal after next week, because um, um, grades will be updated daily at the end of the finals. So if you want to know what your child made in their first semester, sorry, their first period or second period class, you should be able to see that by no later than the next day on the 15th within the parent portal. That grade is the final grade. And then so every day those grades are uploaded. There may be some changes or adjustments, but for the most part, that's the grade. But then you'll also get that final grade report with the transcript that will be mailed out at the beginning of the year, that you will get at the beginning of the year. So contact your counselor if you would like to know if your child is eligible for any type of credit recovery um, so that they can be on the lookout for them and also let you know what might be available. If you're not sure who your counselor is, it, The list of counselors is located on the school's website. Okay, let me just stop sharing so I can show you where that is and who the counselors are. Okay, it didn't go where I wanted, but let me just type it in real quickly. So if you go to centralgwinnett.net, which is the school's website, sorry, my internet is starting to run a little slower. Okay, so once you get to the school's website, click on Student Life and click on Counseling. And there's a lot of information that's good for um, the students, including scholarship information for seniors and so forth. And there's also a list of counselors that is slowly loading up. The counselors for this year, um, there was a change from the last few years. In the most recent years, we did counselors by academies and this year is different. It's done by the students um, last name. So the first letters of the student's last name, except for those students who are in ninth grade, 
they, for, for the first time, ninth graders, they are all um, with Elizabeth Morales. And then any students who are in the School of the Arts, their counselor is Tiffany Brown. And this is not wanting to load. I will be sending out this presentation. And so I'll make sure that um, the link is there for the counselors. And if you have any questions who the counselor is, um, you can always get in contact with me because I'm not sure what's up with the site, but it's not loading. Okay. So I'm just going to close that out. All right. Any questions so far? Okay, just looking, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, I do see some in the chat. I'm sorry, give me one second. Okay, let's see, the hours for the parent center. So um, right now, it's um, Mondays and Wednesdays from 7.30 till 2.45. Um, that may be changing next semester. The other part of my um, responsibilities at school is um, 504 coordinator. So I typically do 504 meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that's why it's Mondays and Wednesdays um, that I can be in the parent center. But just give me a call. And if you need to do on a different day besides Fridays, then I can um, get with you and um, make some time or make an appointment. If students are getting eight credits without failing from ninth grade, why do what do they usually do when they exceed the twenty three? Okay. Okay, that's a good question. So remember. They take like one credit of language arts, ninth grade, one credit of language arts, 10th grade, one credit of language arts, 11th grade, one credit of language arts, 12th grade. So that's the same for math. So um, like typically students don't take two years of um, math at the same time, unless they're trying to make it up, because that would be really hard to do. Um, but those students who are doing well and have their credits, some students will do dual enrollment which would allow them to get credits at the high school level and at the college level. So that's an option. Um, Tiffany Brown is the counselor who is in charge of dual enrollment, and she usually has a meeting in the spring um, about dual enrollment that will help parents understand how students can do that, because it's a great opportunity for those students who would like to either, you could do it at um, a technical school, you can do it at a four-year university, so we have students who attend, for example, Gwinnett Tech, and they may take all of their classes with Gwinnett Tech, but those classes apply to high school graduation, and it also applies for college credit. Um, we have some students who are full-time at Georgia Gwinnett College. Um, they have to apply to be regular application for Georgia Gwinnett College, and if they're accepted by Georgia Gwinnett College, they will have classes sometimes a combination between Central Gwinnett and, um, and Georgia Gwinnett College, or they may take all of their classes at Georgia Gwinnett College. And then those classes, which are free, would apply to high school graduation and college graduation or college credits. So that's what some students do. Um, other students will take, um, for instance, Maxwell, which is a technical school um, within Gwinnett County Public Schools and students can go and learn different things, um, certifications, and so they're able to do that. Um, others will go to Grayson. Grayson also has technical programs um, where students can get credit, get skills that they can use after high school. Um, some students, they attend some of these courses, they get certifications in those fields and go directly into the workforce with that certification. Um, for instance, Maxwell High School has um, car repair 
and those students are actually, I think it's Toyota certified by the time they get finished. So they're able to go directly into a repair shop with a high level skill. So those are all options that students can actually um, take if they're passing their classes and are on, in line for graduation. Okay. Um, can you explain the grading scale for honors? Okay, if a student gets a 69 in the honors class, do they get zero points? So yes. <laughs> Excuse me. In an honors class, um, in basically in any class, 70 and below as the final grade, I'm sorry, 69 and below as the final grade would mean that a student would get zero points in their GPA. However, advanced placement classes have 10 points added on to the final grade. So say if they're earning a 69 at the end of the semester, without the added 10 points, that would mean they would have a grade of 79. So then they wouldn't have failed. But if they have a 59 and had 10 points added on to a 69, that still is not 70. So even in advanced placement class, students can fail and it would count as a zero in their grade point average. Okay. Um, Ms. Crosby asked, can a digital student return to in-person next semester? If they are doing it with the Central Gwinnett High School, the Gwinnett online, um, online classes, um, sorry, Gwinnett online campus, I've been told that they can. Um, they would need to do it at the end of, like do it now. Let Gwinnett Online Campus know that you would like to return to Central Gwinnett High School for a second semester, for next semester. And they will let you know what you need to do um, from their end. And before anyone puts it in the comment box, no, you cannot go in reverse. <laughs> so you can't go from in-person to virtual, just so you know. Okay. Um, another question, if a student has to do credit recovery, is their grade then replaced on the transcript with a passing grade? Yes, that is a good question. Okay, so the grade is, the grade isn't replaced because that, that failing grade will still be there, but it will show on the transcript that they retook that class and received a passing grade for that class. Okay, so, Does someone have a question? Okay. Um, so the the failed class doesn't disappear, it doesn't go away. Okay. All right, those are really good questions. So now you should see getting ready for second semester. So we've talked about first semester. So we're just gonna talk a little bit about beginning of second semester. Okay, and the biggest thing to remember about each new semester is that it's a new semester, it's a fresh start, okay? So for all students, whether they did well or maybe not so well, it's a new start, it's a fresh start. So some things they can think about over break is maybe if they want to get better organized, um, have a routine as far as getting their work done and their class work done. Um, being sure that they go to class <laughs> and attending all of their classes, getting there on time so they don't miss instruction, taking notes and asking questions, um, setting goals for the semester and creating an action plan, surrounding themselves with motivated peers. Peer pressure can make a difference for better or for worse. And then taking good care of themselves. Um, that's emotionally, that's mentally, that's physically, that's as far as their health. Um, getting enough sleep, those type of things make a difference. So what's interesting is that this list that I have here is actually from um, getting ready for second semester for those at college level. 
but they still apply for students in high school the exact same concerns that students can have in high school can follow them into college. It can follow them into their work careers. So now is a good time to set goals, to improve organization, to improve um, attendance, those types of things, to advocate for themselves and asking questions. That helps them for a second semester, but they are also goals and skills that can help them throughout their life. Okay. So what can you do as a parent to get ready for second semester? Help your teen with everything that was on that previous list. <laughs> so that's a, that's a lot there, but if you help them to set goals to meet each of those, then that will really help them to get off to a good start for second semester, especially if they struggled for first semester, okay? The other thing that you can do is to make sure that you have access to the parent portal. I cannot stress how important it is that you have access to the parent portal because with that, you have your grades, you can see the attendance, you can see everything about your child on the parent portal. Um, with the parent portal, there should be no surprises about grades at the end of the semester, okay? So yes, teachers do send out emails um, and they are required to do that, but it is so important that you have access to the parent portal so that you can stay on top of your child's progress as well. If you need assistance with that, um, please contact me, whether that's assistance for getting on to the portal or navigating the portal. Um, we can get together and do it virtually on Zoom, and I can um, show you how to do it, or you can come into the Parent Center, and I can show you how to um, look up information, um, particularly if you're on a phone, because it looks very different on a phone than it does on a computer, and sometimes it's hard to find what you need to click on, depending upon the um, apparatus that you're using. So don't ignore school communications. Um, so that's emails, phone calls, um, letters. If you're getting phone calls constantly from the school, then you need to check in with the school, um, particularly those automated phone calls that are about attendance. If you're getting something every day that your child has missed one or more classes, um, that means that something is going on and it's not the teacher marking them absent um, every single day because they don't even have that teacher every day. So if you ever have any questions about phone calls or emails that you're getting, um, please contact the person who sent it. Or if you're not sure, you can contact me and I can help you um, figure that out. But please don't ignore them. Um, communicate with your teen and your teachers. If you start to see them struggling, um, ask them what are they struggling with? Why do they think they're struggling? What can you do to help? Um, what kind of help do they think they need? And that way, once you communicate with the teacher, you have an idea of where your child is coming from as well. But it's important to communicate with both of them so that you have um, a better picture of the situation. And then don't wait until the last minute to check grades or to take actions with your child. Um, waiting until this week to try to see if something could be done about raising grades, in all honesty, is not very effective. Okay. So the best time to check with teachers about grades is when you first start seeing it slip. And I will be honest. Um, a lot of students don't want to tell their parents that they're struggling. Um, that is a, a youth thing, a teen thing, <laughs> because um, part of it is they don't want to disappoint their parents. Um, part of it is that if they ignore it, they feel that it will go away sometimes. And that just has to deal with maturity. So yes, they are in high school. Yes, they do look like adults. <laughs> yes, they may be taller and bigger than you are. 
but this is a time that they really need your support in um, checking in with them as far as the grades, but at the same time verifying what's happening by using the parent portal or by checking with teachers is even more important because um, like I said, sometimes they will, will not see the seriousness of a situation until they have to learn the hard way. Okay. All right, any questions about that? Let me make sure my chat here. Okay, nope. All right, so any questions? Okay, if you think of any, um, you can throw it into the chat right now, or if you have a question that you'd like to answer, ask, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Or contact me anytime, and I'm going to show my information at the end, and I will also put it in the chat so you can give me a call. So I want to tell you that there is an end of meeting survey, and it's going to be very easy for you to get it. Okay, the survey is available in English and Spanish. And what you're going to do is when I end the meeting, you're going to see a screen that looks like what you see right now. And it will say, thank you for attending the meeting, which I thank you for attending the meeting. And then you're going to click continue to do the survey. So if you would please do that, that would be great. So once you click continue, it will take you directly to the survey. You don't have to put anything into the browser or anything. Just click continue and it will pop up on its own. Okay. So just be sure when you complete it to click submit so that it will um, get to me. Okay. All right. So that's all I have for tonight. Um, like I said, it's kind of like a in the first semester, get ready for the second semester type of um, meeting. Um, if your student did well this semester, congratulations, um, because it's been a tough semester for a lot of us and a lot of our students. If maybe they didn't do as well as they would have liked to, or as you would have liked for them to, then now's the time to um, reflect, to look at the grades for this semester and see what changes or goals can be set for second semester, okay? Remember, a fresh start, a new start, okay? And then this is my information and I'm also going to put it into the chat. I'm turned a little bit because I'm doing it on my other computer here. So my number is 770-822-6540. And I'm putting my email in there as well. .org. There we go. And um, yes, so whatever you need, please give me a call. Um, I do speak Spanish. So you can call and, and we can communicate. And then um, if I don't answer, please leave a message. It's not a cell phone, so I can't tell that you called <laughs> unless you leave a message. And um, I promise I will get back with you. I'm not there on Fridays. I'm part time. So I'm not typically there on Fridays. So if you leave a message on Friday, I will get back with you Monday. OK. All right. So thank you so much for attending. Um, if you come up with any questions or need any additional explanations, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. My name is Gabriela. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to end the meeting so that um, everyone can get that survey. All right. Okay. Have a good one.